Hello everyone, my name is Sol Invictus, and today we'll be playing XCOM Enemy Within. This is a really great game about shooting aliens in the face. It's based off of a game also called XCOM from the early 90s, uh, which was inspired by a really cheesy television show in the 70s and 80s called UFO. Uh, it's really thematic and interesting and uh, very, very challenging. These days, kind of hold your hand. But XCOM does not. XCOM takes your hand and chops it off and feeds it to you. It's it can be punishing, uh, which is good if you like a challenge, and I do. So I'm really excited to get to this. Uh, this is going to be an achievement run. Um, I'm a bit of an achievement junkie, as you can see. I've got a whole bunch already, but there's a few I haven't gotten yet, and I'm hoping to polish them off during this run. Um, I'm going to try to get No Looking Back. I haven't beaten the game on Iron Man mode yet, on Classic at least. I want to get Ain't No Cavalry Coming. You have to have a soldier to survive every mission, a full game. It's super hard. Soldiers get shot a lot. And I'm going to get an army of four, which just means that I'm going to not buy any squad size upgrades. I think that shouldn't be too hard. I just need to try to finish the game a little bit faster than I would otherwise before the really big aliens start showing up. But let's get to it. I'm gonna play on classic, like I said. If you're new to XCOM, I strongly recommend you do this on easy or normal. I thought that I was pretty good at strategy games when I started, and I, I started on classic, and I just got brutalized. I got my soldiers got murdered, and everyone left the XCOM project and you know, just took over the earth. If you're new, or even if you're not new and you're still unsure of yourself, I strongly recommend you do at least normal. It's still plenty challenging though, but not classic. Um, I am gonna put on the DLC, Progeny and Slingshot. Some experts recommend you don't play with these, they can give you, if you do the missions, you don't fail them. You get money and resources. I don't think that it breaks the game, uh, and it adds interesting content and characters to the main campaign, so I think it's worth it and I think it's interesting. I'm going to play on Iron Man, it means you only get one save, it updates the beginning of each turn, and periodically throughout the grand campaign, so you can't go back, which is good. I don't save scum anyway, but uh, it's an extra challenge. Uh, there are some issues with bugs, but I think that more often than not, Iron Man is going to work out just fine. Uh, so, after you beat the game on normal and classic, you unlock a bunch of second wave options. Some of these are needlessly punishing, like anti-trigger tentacle uh, means that when you reveal the aliens, they'll shoot you sometimes, which is random and unpleasant. Red fog means that your soldiers will perform worse after they've been shot, which makes sense, but is with the way that XCOM works very punishing. So some of these are fun if you're looking for a more random or more difficult game. Uh, what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to do New Economy. It randomizes the amount of money that you get from each country. It just changes up the metrics, decision making in where you place your satellites, and I think it adds an interesting dynamic to the game. Not created equally and hidden potential, just randomize the stats that your soldiers have. Uh, it means that they're going to have a little bit more personality and a little bit more variety between them. I think it uh, adds a little bit of diversity to your soldier pool. So with that, let's get started. Now, I am going to let most of the cinematics play. I'm not going to let the opening cinematic play because you can look it up and it's long. But XCOM story is pretty good and I want you to hear Vaughn and Bradford and the others talk when they have a chance. All right. Before you get to shooting aliens, you get to pick a base and you have five choices, each with a different continent bonus. These are useful, and there's a lot of good options. You can get these continent bonuses later in the game by putting satellites over the continent, but you want to start with one that's going to help you out a lot. So North America gives you air and space, which means that all your aircraft, aircraft weapons, cost 50% less to purchase, build, and maintain. This is better than it sounds. It gives you an immediate discount and saves you money each month and saves you a bunch of money when you start buying aircraft is going to happen pretty quickly. It only gets better the longer the game goes. It starts out good and it stays good. It's a really strong choice. 
Your gives you expert knowledge. Lab tours and workshops cost 50% less to build and maintain. This sounds good and it is good, but it's not actually as good as North America's bonus or Africa's bonus. You'll save a little bit of money on your workshop, which you do want to build pretty quickly, but you might not even build a laboratory. And even if you did, um, the cost saving is uh, fairly minimal. This can be useful for certain strategies, and some people like to build a lot of workshops, which is a useful and definitely a viable choice, but I, I don't think this is quite as useful as uh, some of the other bonuses. Asia gives you kind of a unique bonus, future combat. All projects in the Foundry and the Officer Training School cost 50% less. Uh, this is more useful mid and late game. You have to actually get to the Foundry and the Officer Training School to unlock it and make use of it. Uh, but I'm, I'm gonna go with this because I want to rush rapid recovery so that if my soldiers get injured, they can get back in the fight faster and I can get that no calorie coming achievement my soldiers are sitting in the med bay for a month. They're not going to be able to take part in missions, and I don't want that. So there's also some strategies that involve rushing ships or other things out of the foundry. So this is an interesting cut and bonus, maybe not the most useful one, but it's I'm going to give it a shot. South America is we have waves, autopsies, and interrogations are completed instantly. This is so useful. It's really, really useful. It saves you a ton of time, but it's also easy to get in the first or second month if you really want it. You only need two satellites to kind of cover South America, so it's not a great place to start. It is somewhere you should pick up with soon. Africa has all in. Your monthly XCOM funding is, funding is increased by 30%. Uh, this is a great all around bonus, nothing fancy. Um, if you're playing for the first time, I strongly recommend you give this a shot. Uh, Africa is usually the first or second continent I pick up after my starting continent. But we're gonna start in Asia. All right, Australia. Why the aliens would choose to invade such a Horrible comment. Strike one. This is nice beyond me. But you are free to engage all hostile contacts in the AO. Don't take any chances. They're aliens with inscrutable motivations. So play one made Australia more power to Okay, so the mechanics of this game are not too complicated, but they're really well implemented. And one of the most important things that you need to keep in mind if you want to keep your soldiers alive is cover. So you'll notice that when I'm moving the cursor around to various obstacles that these shields show up. So the half shield is half cover. If you move your soldier to half cover, they get a plus 20 bonus to defense. If you move them into full cover, they get a plus 40. You always want to be in cover in classic and above. You always want to be in full cover. Uh, the aliens, if they see you, will shoot you. They're really good shots. And especially this early in the game, you will not survive getting shot by so you really want to be in cover, so I'm going to move my soldiers up. I'm going to move them all into cover. First, let's see who we've got. We've got John Fisher, Andy Burns, Bonnie Allen, and Mary Campbell. So pretty generic names. <clears throat> let's move Fisher up to this oh truck. Aye, aye, Commander. Let's move Bonnie. On my way. We're gonna have her go through the building, so we'll move her up here. And so you really never ever want to dash. Um, if you dash in the wrong place, you'll leave yourself exposed. Your soldier won't have a move left. They might be in the middle of a bunch of aliens, but I'm fairly certain that I can move Andy Burns here without triggering any aliens. So Let's I'm do this. Let dash. Alright, so I'm going to put everyone else in Overwatch. Overwatch just means that if they see an alien, they will take a shot at it. Uh, at this point in the game, they're not great shots, so if aliens show up, they might not do anything, but it is better than nothing, so let's just see what happens. Okay, so I can see some meld over there. Meld is a useful resource that is used for creating augmented soldiers and 
uh, genetically modifying your soldiers, so I'm not gonna go for that. I think this Fisher is Sherman. Based on my understanding. So if I don't move her up, then I won't be able to get that meld. I'm a little concerned about dashing her, so I'm gonna move my soldiers forward a bit first. Moving out. We'll go. Moving out. Right, no aliens yet. I strongly recommend you don't do what I'm about to do, but I am going like to push Fisher forward. Okay. Took a risk, it paid off. I'll be able to get that meld next turn. No problem. Here are those aliens scurrying around and alien things. Since you put Fisher up. Still no aliens. On the move. All right, move Campbell up. No aliens. I'm on it, Commander. Burns up. That's what we're looking for. No aliens. Let's see some more meld. I'm gonna tell you right now that I'm 90 percent sure that I know what the aliens are. But nice and slow. Heading out. And Look sharp. There we Enemies go. rolling up. So, ideally. You want to be able to kill the aliens the first turn that you see them, but I've got Bonnie Allen with a hide advantage behind full cover, and I think that this is safe. Uh, she's not much of a shot, but I'm gonna take it anyway. Nice shot, Bonnie Allen. Alright, so. I now know where all the aliens are. I'm gonna move Fisher back. Be comfortable dashing her. I'm on it, Commander. Campbell here. Shouldn't do that, but I want her to be in position next time. And I'm gonna throw up Overwatch. Alright, so this alien is mind melding. Sectors can do that. It makes the when it's mind melded a lot more dangerous. Alright, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Oh, watch out. Okay. I can work with that. So, I'm gonna. Okay. Send her here. Did we miss that? They treated us, okay. Now they're officially treated. I think I can hit it. I'm gonna hit this alien. With a grenade, so I need to be really careful. I don't want to destroy that melon. I'm not sure I have a choice though, to be honest. You know, this is not the end of the world. So, I'm just gonna do it. Alright. There's meld in every mission. Commander, it would be preferable if we wanted to amount, retrieve those canisters rather than destroying them. It's definitely more important that you keep your sword alive. And if I had not killed those there, they would have been some serious trouble. I think Mary Campbell is in a good position to Heading there now. murder some aliens. Yep. She's got a flank, so when it shows up in yellow, that means you've got that alien of flank. Bonus to hit and critical, so I think I can kill this guy pretty easily. Boom. Nailed him. Good work on Campbell. Headed there now. So burns. A pretty decent chance to hit. Yes, but no longer a threat. No way that just happened. Headed there now. So ideally. In the first mission would get all of your soldiers killed, but I think I can put an end to this right now. And everybody but Burns will have gotten killed, so rather than risk letting 
this guy get a lucky shot off. I am going to put him down. Oh wait, I can't count this other alien. Let's see. I do not remember where that other alien is. Oh, let's just see what we can see. Like a four. Okay. Make sure you keep track of, of your aliens. Nobody wants to lose an alien. Heading there now. This is frustrating. I'm all over it. I have no idea where he went. Okay. Oh, I'm just gonna put everybody on the watch. Pretty luck. Oh, I know where he Do you hear something? I'm pretty sure that he's hiding like a little bitch down here. I test that hypothesis. Move it. Got himself a kill. Good work out there, Strike One. If I may, Commander, the labs are on high alert. Teams are standing by for your orders. We can begin researching the newly recovered artifacts immediately. All right, so lost an alien, but I redeemed myself by finding out where he was. So that's Operation Fallen Days, and everybody got a kill. And we're all set. So nobody took damage. Pretty good. Didn't get all the mail, but otherwise, pretty excellent mission. So, let's see what happens next. Commander to the research. All right, so Bradford's gonna give us a speech. He's a cool dude who doesn't afraid of anything. Welcome to XCOM HQ, Commander. I'm Central Officer Bradford. My role in this project is twofold, providing tactical support for our field operations and keeping you briefed on the current situation. My efforts should allow you to focus on the bigger issues at hand. Speaking of which, we have a soldier waiting for a promotion in the barracks. I'll let you get to it. So the reason why, by the way, thanks Bradford, nice to meet you too. The reason why you want each of your soldiers to get a kill in the first mission. Impressive work, Commander. Is because our soldiers have to be feeling that happens, after a mission like that. Then you'll get one of each class. Uh, if you don't, then you might end up without an assault or without a sniper. You can probably get by without a support, but you really want one of the other ones to begin with. And even if you Commander to the research labs. Commander um, to the research promote labs. a bunch of rookies to squatty, you might end up with fifteen supports. It's happened. It's you know, you can work with it, but this is an ideal way to start, so Jenna Fisher is our support. Mary Campbell is our Scottish heavy. Andy Burns is our assault. And good old Bonnie Allen is our sniper. The recovered artifacts are being unloaded, and the research team is waiting your orders. We'll get started as soon as you give the order, Commander. Okay. Let's get to the research labs. Hello, Commander. My name is Dr. Farlin. I oversee the research labs. This is where all of XCOM's research and development takes place. We have already begun analyzing the artifacts recovered from our first encounter with the aliens. Based on our preliminary findings, we believe we can use them to develop some new equipment for our soldiers. With your approval, we will begin research immediately. To the research labs. All right. So, we have a lot of options here, and normally I would go right for Xenobiology. It allows you to get your arc thrower quickly, which allows you to capture live aliens, which in turn gives you research credits and intact weapons and all sorts of other useful things. But I am going to rush a foundry 
because I'm in Asia and I have that future combat bonus, so I'm going to start with weapon I fragments. I agree. That does seem to be the most pressing of our oh, current sorry, research fragments. options. Uh, we'll begin immediately. I will notify you when a complete oh, report yeah, is available. Oh, there's fragments. Um, if you kill too many aliens with grenades, which I have been known to do, uh, you won't be able to start weapon fragments right away, but uh, by your second mission you should be able to just fine. So let's go to engineering and take a look at some stuff there. Ah, Commander. I was wondering when you'd be stopping by. Welcome to engineering. Anything they can dream up in the research labs, we can build it here. Speaking of which, Dr. Valen has just sent us some new schematics. With your approval, we will begin fabrication. Alright, so Commander to mission control. at the beginning of the game, Commander you can to mission pretty control. much just build two things. A medkit and a satellite. We are going to want to build a satellite this month, but we're not going to build one right now. Uh, we're going to wait until we have some more engineers to make the cost. We could build a med kit, and it might not be smart not to have one, but I like everybody to have a grenade because for the first month you only see sectoids and you can take them out with a grenade. Or almost always see sectoids, I should say, things like that. Um, so I like to have everybody have grenades for the first month. So we're not going to build anything. We are going to check the facilities, though. This is nice. Uh, good. This is actually really nice. Good distribution of Commander to mission control. excavated Commander squares to mission control. and steam right beneath this, which is where, which is a good place. I can build a square of power generators and save me some time and money. I am going to start some excavation. I'm not going to build anything until we have some more engineers. So that's it for the first Let's Play. I'm Sol Invictus. On the next one, we will spin the globe and see what happens. I'll see you next time.